Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of 99 Names, the one and final session uh, of 99 Names. So this is our 30th gathering, alhamdulillah, and uh, we will be closing out the 99 names uh, of Allah today. We'll be closing out with the final three names and actually one bonus name. So we'll, we'll be doing uh, 100 uh, at the end, but just a small bonus there. But uh, last time, yesterday, we covered the names of uh, Al-Mani, I'm sorry, not Al-Mani, Al-Hadi, Al-Badi, uh, Al-Baqi. So the three names we covered, and Al-Hadi was the one who chose the right way, the leader, the guide. Al-Badi was the discoverer, the creator, the um, originator, the unprecedented uh, inventor, um, and the absolute cause. And Al-Baqi was the eternal, the everlasting, and the ever surviving. And so now we come to three names uh, of Allah, plus a bonus one, um, in which uh, Allah is Al-Warith, the sole heir, the inheritor, Al-Rashid, the one who shows the right way, who gives direction, Al-Sabur, the patient and the forbearing. And uh, we'll cover the fourth bonus name, Ash-Shafi. Ash-Shafi is the healer, the one who restores health. But without further ado, let us go ahead and let us jump into the Asma'il Husna. Um, for one last time, we'll do our recitation here. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. Let's see here. All right. So. All right. So one last time here, we'll be doing the Asma'il Husna. As we come along this way, you'll see our final three names that are uh, listed there, but you will also uh, be able to recognize all the names that we have covered since. So like I said, at this point, you don't need to know um, with regards to who, you know, every single name that is there. All you need to know is that, you know, we become familiar with these names. We become familiar with all these names and uh, we, we make the intention to know all these names, but uh, you've come a long way, we've come a long way. And so these names should now become at least somewhat familiar. So let us go ahead and let us begin here, inshallah. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Who Allah Al-Wahid, al-Ahad, al-Samad, al 
القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعلي البر التواب المنتقيم العفو الرهوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجام الجامع الغني المغني المان الضال نافع النور الهادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور. So as we begin today's names. We start with the name of Al Warith, which you had probably seen on the screen there. So Al Warith is the sole heir, the inheritor. It seems maybe like a strange name for Allah to be uh, an inheritor when Allah is the one that has created everything and has brought forth everything. But this name indicates that Allah is the one who inherits everything from the heaven and the earth after putting it forth, that everything that comes from Allah eventually returns to Allah in some forth. And we see this especially with our creation, with us as humans, in our belief in our being that to Allah we belong and to Allah we return. And so we see Allah re-inherits these, re-inherits all these things that are put out. Not that Allah loses any ownership or anything like that over, but literally comes back. Uh, and so this, this name, when we think about it, what it, what it really helps us get at is a sense of freedom of attachment. And we'll talk about that in a second, but this name brings about a freedom of attachment when we realize that the only thing we are going to be taking with us when we pass away, when we take to the grave is, is just ourselves, whatever we've got here. Nothing of our possessions, of our wealth, of any of our children or any of these things that we may have will, will be of avail to us, are things that we can take with us. Um, you know, it's not like, you may see in a ancient Egyptian, you know, Pharaoh's uh, funeral room or like a burial room where you have a burial chamber with so many treasures and all these different things, because that belief was that, you know, th this, uh, this king will take all these things or this queen will take all these things into the next life. Uh, and for us, we, we don't, we don't have that concept. And so in, 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 in Islam, uh, for the most part, people are buried in, in a very simple manner and, and taken in accord to that. And, so when we see what we take with us with at the end helps kind of conduct how we live our life in the present, uh, knowing that Allah is the sole heir of all the things, of all the things that we leave behind. If we leave behind children, if we leave behind all these things, uh, that we leave them to Allah. We leave them to Allah to look after, to look after those affairs. And so Allah is your inheritor, as weird as it might sound, but uh, in that sense of that caretaking. And so the root of this name, the root of this name has the meanings of to inherit, to transfer by will, to leave, to make over to bring down, to give legacy, to give heritage. And al warith reminds us not only, as I said, where we come from, but what we have brought with us as we've gone through life as inheritors. We've inherited this world. We've been appointed as Khalifa or caretakers of this world. We've inherited it. And now at our time to close, we give that back. And so what does that, what does that look like? And so we, we raise up the concepts of the one to whom all these possessions are here once the owners pass. The one who inherits all these is Allah. And so we learn in this process to not identify with our limited self or our bare attachments or just the material stuff. We, we learn through this name to get in touch with what are we really taking with us? What we're really taking is all that's inside us. And so if it's something that we build up and it becomes a very rich inside, a very rich soul, a very rich and pure heart, you've taken with you a, a tremendous amount of treasure, regardless of how you go through life. But if it's maybe not as, as, as pure as worked on, um, then, then, there, then there is 
definitely um, some cause, not necessarily for concern, but just in a sense that did we live life to the fullest? Did we live life? Are we taking with us that which really does matter? If we spent our life building up empires and all these things and amassing crazy amount of wealth, but we're not changed people on the inside, you know, how, what, what are we really taking with us because of there not being much avail with us there? And so this name helps bring about transformation. This name helps bring about transformation because we're, we now, as we learn about this name, as we learn about al as we learn about uh, the uh, Allah being a heir to all of the things that we leave behind, that it begins a transformation for us as we start to search for our true self. Who are we behind all these things that we're going to leave behind? Because Allah will inherit these, but Allah is also going to inherit us again because we'll uh, return to Allah. So what will that inheritance be like? As I mentioned in a previous session, that th it's kind of like a you're, you're checking out that hotel room. You're checking out a hotel room and you're turning in your key. And what is the state of the hotel room? The hotel room is not just the world. The hotel room is not just where you were born. Hotel room is not just the environment around you. The hotel room is also you. And the hotel room is you, in a sense, your condition. And so thinking about how am I returning to Allah in the body, in the form that Allah has given me, what is it going to look like when I give it back to Allah? And so thinking, being cognizant of that, being cognizant of what do we look like? So we think about all of our capacities, all of our potential, our talents, our experiences, our encounters, all these different things are what we start to lift up when we really look for our true self. And so at the center of all of our change, at the center of the transformation, at the center of all of our conversation has been the heart, has been the heart because the heart is the one muscle in the body that the Prophet Sallam identified that if something is wrong with it, uh, something's wrong with the rest of the body and it, the, the rest of the body is affected. And we know that this is the center of our being. And so when we purify that heart, we begin to purify everything else. And so when you leave this world, you leave with nothing more than that spiritual heart, than that, than that heart in the middle. And so what is the stage of that? What, is, what, is the, uh, what does it look like when you turn that, that heart back into Allah uh, and, and it's checkout status. Is it, is it, you know, is it all right? Is it, is it so much like, you know, transformed or is it uh, something that you wish you probably had a few more days on? And so uh, as, as we conclude with this name, al helps us really let go. It really helps us let go, overcome our greed, overcome our attachments, overcome those things that we feel are all of our possessions and all these things that are preoccupying us, are creating veils for our heart and instead helps us concentrate our effort, our strength on the essential, the, uh, the essential natural aspect of giving that right to our natural soul, caring and nurturing our natural soul, caring and nurturing what is within us that Allah will inherit as well as what is around us. So how did we leave the world around us? We mentioned that as in another, any other situation where someone is to inherit something after somebody passes, that person inherits their possessions or whatever it may be. In, in our case, Allah inherits both. Allah inherits us as we return to Allah, but Allah also inherits those possessions which we've left behind because Allah is still the caretaker. Allah still uh, has dominion. This is still Allah's mulk. And so how do we leave the things that we've left behind? So we take this name to not just evaluate ourselves and get a moment to work on ourselves, but also think about how have we left the world around us? How have we left the relationships around us? How have we left the people and the creation and the earth, all of these things around us? So it gives us a cause for pause, but also a cause for action because we want to do better if we know that we're going to check this out and all these things are going back to Allah. The next name of Allah is Ar-Rashid. Ar-Rashid is uh, very similar to a name we covered yesterday, uh, Al-Hadi, which is the guide, because Ar-Rashid is the one that shows the right way. Ar-Rashid is the one who gives direction, is the infallible teacher, the guide. And so this name has more connotation of active teaching. And so the root of this name is to be on the right way, to follow the right course, but to be well guided, to not go astray, but also to uh, to lead, to, to sojourn along. And the guidance here entails self-observation first and foremost. 
of our egos as well as our impulses. And so that, that guidance, as I mentioned, is not so much that Allah spotlights a specific destination and says, hey, here's where you're headed. In order to receive that guidance, we've talked about time and time again how we need to work on purifying our heart so that we can see the signs, so that we can be open to the signs and see all of the different ways Allah is guiding us in the world here, in the people around us, in any type of thing uh, that we, we pay attention to that, that our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears open to Allah's signs when we work on our heart and we reduce our ego and we lift the veils of the heart. And so this name shines that divine light on our path. The word uh, for murshid or uh, spiritual teacher uh, in the in the Sufi tradition is derived from ar-Rashid. It refers kind of how it, it gives us the connotation of Allah act, uh, guiding us like a teacher, guiding us like not just any teacher, not just a teacher that will create a lesson plan and say, hey, go go and follow this and then we'll grade us and or say fail, pass, fail, pass, fail. Um, or in an older school, you know, use a little stick to uh, to correct us or to, to, to kind of hit us on the back and be like, hey, what are you, what are you doing? No, Allah, Allah is a very different kind of teacher. Uh, Allah in Ar-Rashid brings balance, uh, it also, but also teaches us how to walk on the path of Allah. And the key of this name is removing the egocentric thought of that I can do all of this myself, that I don't need a teacher, that I've, I've done all this, and taking all the things we've inherited, taking all the things that we've gotten, and just attributing it to ourselves. And so this name aims to instill humility, instill that God consciousness that no, every one of us needs and has a teacher, and Allah is all of our teachers, even however high we get in life, whatever uh, stratas we achieve, that Allah is always there and is our teacher. So it makes us more con cognizant and less about us, less about that ego. And so when we think about this name, we see in Ar-Rashid, the one who unerringly decrees, the one who appoints or ordains a specific and right way, and the one who is a absolute supreme director to the right path and belief. This is one who perfectly and righteously directs all matters towards their proper conclusion and one who needs no aid to direct all affairs rightly. So as we close with this name, we think we, we remind ourselves that each of us needs a teacher. Each of us may have gone through, uh, you know, our grade school or whatever it might be. We've all had teachers in life, whether in a school setting or at home or anything like that. Allah pairs all the best of those qualities but also the best attributes of a teacher, the, the most holistic attributes of a teacher, that a teacher is one that uh, go, walks alongside, that, that understands the, the needs and caters something very specific to the specific student, to um, the, the one they are teaching. They understand the, 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 the student's um, maybe learning disabilities or the student's needs. And so the teacher is one that accommodates, but also is there and guides slowly, goes patch by patch. And so think of Allah as not just that teacher that you have for first grade or not just the teacher that comes at the end of life or anything like that. Allah is your teacher, your first grade teacher, your fifth grade teacher, your 10th grade teacher, your college professor. <laughs> Allah is all of these things, uh, but is, is consistently there. And so it gives us a time to step back, to understand that at each and every moment in our life, we have a teacher that is there, even in summers, even in our holidays, but that this teaching that we get is for a purpose of transformation, is that every, every moment that we have, every opportunity that we have becomes a teaching moment. It's no longer just a one-off thing that happens in, in between August and December or between January and June. It is something that happens year round. It's something that happens daily that we have these teaching moments. And so as Allah is our teacher, Allah teaches us through the signs around us, through the people around us, through the, the, uh, the uh, events around us, how to grow and be better. So we see this example of Allah, not just as a guide that says, hey, here's where you go, there's where you go, but Allah as someone that teaches us step by step. The second to last name, as I mentioned, we're doing one bonus name today. The second to last name is As-Sabur. As-Sabur is a beautiful name that refers to the patient, the forbearing. And As-Sabur is uh, Allah um, and is the strength that enables us to persevere with things until the very end. We lift up absolute perfect patience. And not only is Allah 
the patient Allah is the source of patience, that from Allah we receive this patience. And so uh, Allah in this name grants us willpower, helps us for, uh, focus and collect in our center, really reground ourselves in difficult times, but also in prosperous times when we might tend to forget, when we might tend to forget the divine, we might tend to forget the rahmah or the mercy of Allah. These, this name reminds us to keep those names for, for at, at our center, to remember the love and mercy of Allah, to remember the presence of Allah uh, in these times when we might not have much patience. And so the root of this name has the connotations of to bind, to tie, to fetter, to be patient though, to be forbearing, to bear calmly, to renounce and to withstand among so many others. And we, we're probably very familiar, most of us with the word sabr. Sabr means patience and uh, tenacity, but above all, perseverance in the good and surrender to the divine will. And this name sabr has, uh, leads to the divine. It leads to the divine because it promotes things like self-control, steadfastness, resistance, forbearance, all of these attributes that come once the floodgates of patience are opened. You see that this also speaks to not just Allah as the patient, but what Allah creates in patience, what all comes with patience. Patience is not just being like, okay, I'm all right with this. I'm fine with this. Patience has so many other things that flow with it. And so one of those things that flows with patience is tawakkul. Is tawakkul is a sense of God consciousness, God mindfulness. Some folks define it as uh, fearing, uh, fear of God, um, but in a sense that you are aware of Allah. You are aware of Allah uh, and that Allah does everything. Allah, to Allah is all these affairs um, that are going around. And so we attribute our tawakkul with this patience. And so as we close with as-sabur, we see as-sabur gives us the strength and the capacity to hold the knowledge that Allah has granted to us, to hold all the things that Allah has granted to us, and to know that each of these will come to shine. Each of these has their moments, but we, we, we don't rush these things. We, we be patient with them. And uh, this name brings that divine sense of trust as well. So we have uh, we have this, this, this concept that's there. Uh, and, you know, you have this, this, uh, that's there, this, this trust in Allah that, that is there. Um, I apologize. I may have uh, misspoke that uh, I said taqwa instead. So tawakkul instead is the, the trust of Allah. Um, the, the fear of Allah as well, the, the, the taqwa, um, or the awareness of Allah is also something that comes about this, but first and foremost, this name patience brings that tawakkul, brings that trust in Allah and having that all together. And so as-sabur is patience of many types. It's not just a specific patience, but it's the patience of what is good in someone. It's the patience of what is bad or uh, maybe detestable in someone. And it's the pa patience with the things around us that are not in our control, whether for good or for bad, catastrophes, disasters, but also just spontaneous events. And to have patience in Allah is a sign of faithfulness, is a sign of faith. And so Allah gives us patience and helps us remain to uh, stay within ourselves, but to remain true during these peaks and troughs of life, through the peaks and the valleys of life in all different states. And lastly, patience is born of gentleness. Patience is born of gentleness because the gentler the heart, the greater the patience. And Allah's patience manifests manifest time and time again through the guidance that we as creation are offered, despite our waywardness, that each and every time we, we, are, we might find ourselves lost, Allah's patience brings us back. Allah is patient to bring us back and give us many, 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 many chances, chances that we ourselves, if we we're in a similar position with our finite views, would probably not give ourselves. So we think that we look in the mirror and we think about, would we give ourselves multiple chances, the, the, sec, the type of chances that Allah gives us? And so Allah closes the cycle of these 99 names with patience. It's, it begins with mercy, it ends with patience. And so you see in between mercy and patience lies the concept of Allah in Islam that between patience and between mercy or between mercy and between patience we have everything that is in between but you see these two attributes are lifted up
the last name I want to lift up here in just a minute or so that is Ashafi. Ashafi is not one that's specifically listed as a divine name in the 99 names, but is one that is related in a tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu that Ashafi is the healer, the one who restores health. And the root of it has the meanings of healing, bringing back to health, restoring, quenching, satisfying, remedying. It refers to the literal healing of our illnesses, our ailments, anything that we're facing, but also to the holistic healing of the body, of the mind and the soul. And so the term Shifa, which uh, refers to kind of recovery from illness and improving of health, Allah as a Shafi is the one who not only knows of all illnesses, of their causes, but of their cures and provides those cures. And Allah knows the illnesses of the mind, the body, and the soul, the illnesses of not just the physical that we face, but the illnesses of doubt, illnesses of malice, of jealousy, of sin. And there is no healing except through Allah. And there's no removing of any of the harm except through Allah. So we close with these names and we, we, we have gone through all 99 plus one, so 100 names of Allah in this session. But we remind ourselves, if anything that we take from this session, we remind ourselves that Allah begins the 99 names with mercy and Allah concludes the 99 names with patience and everything that's in between is there. But we've come at this teaching, we've come at this lesson, we've come at these names from an angle of healing. So anytime you look at these names, ask yourself, how can I incorporate a healing, not just that I hurt myself and I need to be healed, but a healing of the mind, the body, and the soul. So reflect on this, and we conclude with a dhikr of the three names that, that we started with, um, Al-Warith, uh, Al-Rashid, Al-Sabur, and then we'll close with a short dua, uh, short invocation, short prayer, as we conclude Ramadan, as we conclude these, this series, inshallah. So let us begin with the dhikr or the recitation and remembrance of these names. Bismillah. <clears throat> La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Alwarith, 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 alwarith. Alwarith, 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 Yawarith, 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 Yawarith. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Ar-Rashid, 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 Ar-Rashid. Ar-Rashid, 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 Ar-Rashid. Ya Rashid, 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 Ya Rashid. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Assabur, 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 Ya sabur, ya sabur, ya sabur. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So brothers and sisters, as we conclude these names, as we've gone through the 99 names plus one of Allah, 
we we make ourselves mindful. We make ourselves mindful that we, in all these names, we are not uh, disconnected from Allah. That we are wholly connected to Allah, and our world is wholly connected to Allah. So we live in a way in which Allah is embedded and in manifest in all of the things around us. And so, as we conclude the session, we make short du'a. We make a du'a that. Uh, Allah as Ar-Rahman ar gives us mercy, gives us that mercy to continue to know these names, gives us the mercy to help us in our shortcomings and gives us the peace, gives us the salam to continue to experience these names, but to continue to uh, take in this life uh, as a way of peace, as a peace that is taken, but also uh, to be Al-Muhaymin, to be the witness over us, to be the protector over us, to give us a security through a mu'min as we experience this life and to allow us to have patience, to be uh, a sabur for us, to be a razak, the provider for us, and to allow us to, through these things, through our provisions, through the mercy, through the patience, through all of these things, allow us to come to know Allah, to come to know Allah in al-zahir or al-batin, the hidden or the manifest. And so we ask Allah to accept whatever good uh, we count, we bring in these sessions, whatever good has come from these sessions, we attribute it to Allah. And whatever shortcoming it is, I take full responsibility there. But I hope that this, uh, this series has been a benefit, inshallah. And we pray to Allah that Allah guides us to the right path, whatever that looks like for each of us. And that inshallah, Allah brings us closer together to this divine connection than we were at the beginning. So, I mean, inshallah, we, we pray this, but I appreciate you all for coming. Inshallah, I hope this series has been a benefit. As I mentioned, anything that's great, that's good, that's come from this series has come from Allah. Any shortcoming is from myself. We ask you to keep our, all, us all in, our, in your prayers. Uh, and inshallah, we're putting a pause on the conversation. We're not uh, going to uh, continue, just put, put a full stop to this, inshallah. We'll continue it at some point down the line. But we want you to enjoy your sleep after Ramadan. So we will we'll definitely let honor that. But jazakallah khair for everything, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless your Ramadan. And may Allah bless your Eid. Um, and however that might look for you and your loved ones. But jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother Ahmed.